morning, Adele. Good, good morning. Good morning, Sorrel. Good morning, Tara. Good said. morning. Good morning. Good morning. I got a question for you, Tara. You there? Hey. Yes. <laughs> I hear you. What happened when the pirate attempted to recite the alphabet? Um, I don't know. He stopped with a hoy. <laughs> <laughs> he got lost at sea. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> You're terrible. <laughs> <laughs>
and relationships. She's a frequent speaker on consciousness, business psychology, and personal development. And she is the host of All Things Human, a podcast. And Adele is the only wisdom teacher who combines the power of storytelling with mindset, embodiment, and spiritual practices to help people just like you and me create success at a time when there's more change and uncertainty than ever. It's my pleasure to welcome you, Adele, back to the Daily Huddle and uh, just can't wait for this conversation. Oh, great. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for that wonderful, warm intro. I'm glad to be here. This is going to be an awesome conversation. It's the stuff that I think I crave talking about. And I think so many people want, it's like coming to an oasis, come drink, you know, and, and see what flows in to fill your cup today. You know, uh, earlier, prior to uh, everyone coming in, uh, you and I were batting this question back and forth. So how did that question come to you, Adele? And why that question even? How uh, do you know if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing? Why that question? Well, it was a question that haunted me for many, many years, probably the first, first 30, 40, 30 or 35, 40 years of my life. Um, and I noticed that it was also impacting a lot of my clients. It's the underspoken, uh, the rumbling that's underneath a lot of people's angst, anxiety, stress. It doesn't have a word. It doesn't have a specific, you know, what should I wear today? Or uh, even what should I be when I grow up? Because I came to realize after a lot of struggle with myself around this, like, why the heck am I here? It's really more of an ongoing prayer and a conversation than survey says, you know, when you take these career tests, what you should be when you grow up or, um, I mean, maybe you even had an idea what you should grow up. I, when I grow up, I want to be a doctor or a fireman, but that's not a, as full bodied an expression of you. I mean, that's a job, but even a job is not the main reason why you're here. There's something much bigger. It gets expressed through our careers. And that's why having this conversation on a career oriented discussion is so important. So it's not like why am I here lives over here after five. And then I, during the day, eight to five, I do something else that in order to have a well bought a balanced life that means something that feels fulfilling. So you can be at your best, not just for your family and your friends, your communities, but for you, because we get one life, we get one shot at this. So spending the time and the inquiry around this question is actually a good thing. Um, and it needs to be done in an open way and not a, oh my God, what, you know, like sometimes I think people get so stressed about the question because they think they should have known the answer by now. And my thought is it's really more of an ongoing question and conversation with, you know, the, the divine of your understanding. It, it's never done. It's more mm -hmm. of an ongoing, what more am I bringing into this life? Um, but I see this basic existential question rumbling under so much stress and anxiety whether it's career I see it a lot of it in business but also after business yeah uh, Adele this is this is so cool now I'm I'm interested in what the inquiry has been like for you yeah. you've been dwelling in this question for how long now yeah well I started to get a clue after coming out of major depression uh, I was how old? I was about 30, 38. And I had a horrible breakup. I was madly in love with this man who couldn't give me the time of day. And I remember at that point, there was a, a switch that went off in my head saying that I could no longer keep working on myself to try to get the answer. And this is something, if your audience can just invite into the question, the number of people that are constantly working on themselves to improve something, it's not that that's wrong, but the problem is you're never done. There's always something else to fix instead of the curiosity, yes, of, oh, fix, learning something is more skill oriented. I could always learn to do accounting differently, or I could learn to drive a race car better, you know, but when you're talking about who you be, there's really nothing more to fix as much as to discover, to uncover, 
and express because whatever starts flowing, you pack that into whatever you're doing for a living and life is going to feel a whole lot better. So for me, when at age 37, I was obsessed with self-improvement, how to be a better partner, how to be, you know, better corporate banker and all this other stuff. And I thought if I can do things better, then I'll be happier. I was really caught up with that facade. And it, it took a major life crisis for me to realize this is not working. <laughs> so that's a long question to what sent me down a completely opposite path because I was very stubborn. I said, if I can just squeeze a little bit more blood out of this turnip, I'll get there. I'll just fix it. I'll figure it out. And one thing that I'm spreading with all my communities as a message, as an invitation is, and that's why I love this show. You cannot do this type of inquiry, discovery, uncovery. You can't do it by yourself. You need a community. You need people to grok with interesting conversations, a cool podcast, a radio show, people that can support you. Then more gets uncovered. And I feel like one of the things that's really hurting a lot of business people right now is we are in a culture that is uber addicted to self-sufficiency and independence. I'm going to do it all by myself. And because we have this fear of looking weak or vulnerable, but that's where the juice is coming from. Community, your clients, people are attracted to that because we're all trying to be so perfect. So I feel like there's a shift that needs to happen in business leadership and the way we do ourselves in our lives. And we're going to be a lot happier. Mm -hmm. Now, there were two words that you used earlier that just stuck with me, Adele. It's discover yeah. and uncover. So in your journey, having been with this question for so long, having created conversations with clients and others, uh, take us into your world a little bit. Yeah. Well, what have you discovered, I've discovered and uncovered? What are you continuing to, what are you discovering and uncovering? I'm discovering that for myself, um, earlier on, I really did not know how to be human at all. I only knew how to do things, how to be smart, how to be clever, how to give advice, how to perform. And I thought, well, isn't that what you're supposed to do? I mean, literally, I know it sounds weird, but I literally had no other concept of what life was except production, product efficiency, being intelligent, being a good person, whatever that means. But all those are performative. They are doing something. The beingness, I, I, like, what, what, what are you talking about? So the, the beingness is not something you do. It can, it's uncovered and discovered and um, expressed. So beingness has a certain expression. And how do you want to express it in your work? Oh, if, gosh, if you're a business analyst, is, is that the best expression for what you enjoy? Hmm, maybe not. I mean, I was awesome at it. I was one of the top analysts at at and They kept throwing me more money and promotions and the old me would have said, I'm doing pretty good. But oh my God, like this rumbling. And I know a lot of people listening are probably experiencing whether you've been successful and this rumbling won't go away or maybe it's just not fitting. You know, it's, you don't enjoy what you're doing and the rumbling is there. Pay attention to the rumbling because that has the breadcrumbs to the more, whether it's in your business, everything else, everything needs to move and flow in this direction. And then there's less conflict. Theo. This is fascinating. You, Adele, you're fascinating. I just want to tell you that. <laughs> well, I learned through the school of hard knocks. I really did because early You know, a lot of people learn from the school of hard knocks oh, a lot of God. things and then they're not fascinating. <laughs> you are fascinating. Well, I had no idea earlier on that livelihood could feel more like a song than how much did you produce today? Oh, you know, the, fun. Yeah. Now, let me ask you this question, Adele. So uh, first, you're fascinating, and a lot of people are learning a lot of things through hard knocks, and they're not. Thank you, you are fascinating. Oh, thank you. Uh, but what I wanted to get your thoughts on this, uh, in, on an inquiry that is coming for me based on what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to get your thoughts. So, so in this, um, in this question that we are being with. How do you know if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, right? And this, this, 
I guess there is an emphasis for me in this supposed to, right? And one of the things that I'm hearing from you is this, this, this discovery or uncovering that what I'm hearing, maybe not what you're saying, but what I'm hearing is that it's the, the juice is not in doing what you think you're supposed to be doing, but in being human while you're doing what you're doing. And the discovering of the being gives me this, this juice out of life, not so much the doing, not so much what you're supposed to be doing. And so, uh, and the last thing I want to say that I thought was just so freaking beautiful is I don't know how to be a human. I just don't, I just know how to do human things. Oh my God. Everybody write that down because Giovanni, you just said what 99% of the people are struggling with. How do we be human? I only know how to do human and that do has come from society, parents, well, well intentioned, you know, it's because they didn't know either. Yeah. So, so yeah. what's your, what are your thought? What, what, how are you putting together this thing? I'm, it's this really I would say difficult puzzle to understand. Yeah. How are you putting it together in the context of, well, how do I know what I'm supposed to be doing? Yeah. I love this. And, uh, and livelihood is a big part of it. That's why I love putting it in a business context. So, because if it's too broad, like the brain just blows up, like who should I be? You know, but if it's more like how, well, the way I express leadership, business careers, how do you want to express what you do in the world in such a way that, oh, you enjoy it, first of all, and you're probably good at it. And oh, somebody wants to hire you. That's the best fit. So when you talk about what should I be doing, if we get rid of the word should, because it's so programmed into our brain and maybe replace it with the word want, or what am I pulled to do? Because my, this is just me, you all can sit with it. My sense of the word should, I think people are afraid of missing the memo from God. Like I got one life and what if God really put me down on the planet to be a botanist, you know, and I became a school teacher. Oh my God, my life is a failure. We don't want to screw up, right? So I feel like that's where the biggest should comes from. The capital S that I have failed life, not even society or what my dad wanted to be, but I have like failed the cosmic memo. The way I want to just encourage everyone to relax around this, because the answers come when you're relaxed, that whatever your divine instrument, your purpose, or whatever that is, it will always respect divine instrument, divine, uh, divine, whatever you want to call it, divine spirit, whatever, will always honor divine instrument. That means what you're pulled to do if we if we play should with pulled or called or whatever, it's never going to have you doing something you can't stand. I think sometimes people afraid like, well, I should be a doctor. And I'm like, well, do you want to be? Well, no, but I should, you know. So if the way the, the, the divine expression is, whatever I want is probably part of like 80, 90%, actually it's 100, of the entire calling. So what should I be doing should include something you enjoy. Let's just put that on the table. That will have everyone calm down a bit. That whatever I should be doing optimally should be something that I enjoy. That's kind of like, let's put that as a foundational preposition. And you know, if, it be, if people don't agree with that, well, then we have to drop down even a little bit further into why would you assume that you should be doing something that you hate? Because that's, that's even a deeper question. So to start with some sort of common ground, you know, I like to say, are you open to the possibility that what you should be doing is probably something you enjoy? Then the mind says, oh, but I can't make any money. I'm like, but, but, but that's a different question. Can we just sit with what you enjoy? And so in looking at everyone on the Zoom, just because I'm an energy person, I can sense, I can sense the, the calling to communicate, to, to reach people. There is a... Um, message like I, I like Gio when I look at you you're a very animated uh, yeah you're a very animated passionate person yeah I'll shut up now you have a question no actually you're shutting up when I wanted to continue to talk oh okay <laughs> <laughs> what you, so everybody listening just uh if we can start with the idea that no, you I was, I, is something you enjoy let's start with that Adele, uh, yeah. 
just a quick question and uh, and then maybe open, we can open it up for others. Absolutely. I love these questions. Adele, um, one of the things that you're bringing up is that for me, what I'm hearing is this, this inquiry, this being in this inquiry of discovering for myself or for oneself, what, what do you enjoy to do, right? And, uh, and, and I'd like to get your thoughts on where, where I find most people outside of this community, but where I find most people is that no matter what they do, they're, they're bitter. <sighs> like they are, even they, if they're being with their children, they're bitter. Even if they are being with their significant other who has devoted their entire life to smell their butt, they're still bitter. Like people are mostly bitter in no matter what they do as a context for being a human being. You know, like being a human being is being bitter. And so I like to get your thoughts on this. Oh my gosh, I totally appreciate that. And you can feel the level of pain under all that. That bitterness is a lifetime of never really being able to be myself. I didn't pursue what I really wanted to do because I was trying to be a good boy or a good girl. I didn't marry who I really wanted because like it's a lifetime of feeling like your ship came and left. And, you know, there, there's a lot of pain there. There's some work that can be done to move some of that so that you're not living out your days, whether it's another 30 years on this planet or another five, life is precious. And I, I also want to say that I think one of the reasons why people are struggling with what I, what I like to do, people don't ask themselves the question long enough. What do I like? Well, I like golf but I can't do that for a living. I like art, but you know, they're all broke. I like, like it, it's a quick answer. And the answer tends to be activity oriented. I like, I don't know, playing tennis, but I can't be a tennis player. I like, it, it, it comes and goes. You can feel the rapidity of it. And, and then the bitterness sets in. I can't be in this life, all these things I really enjoy. And I'm like, wait, 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 hold the phone, hold the phone. If we could just sit with that, activity that you like, it hints at a deeper level for you. So for example, if somebody says, well, I always wanted to be, I get, I get this a lot. I always wanted to be an actor, um, but you know, you know, can't make money as an actress. So I spent my life as a corporate drone and you can feel the bitterness, right? I mean, the, the sense that I, I packed away what really makes me alive on this planet to make money. This is the number one problem in business that people are struggling with. It's the rumble. So how do we reckon, not reconcile like, well, you know, maybe you just do theater on the weekend. Like that, that definitely is a possibility. But when I sit with a client, I, I ask what I'm asking myself, what is the essence of this person trying to express? She loves communicating with people. She like, like everyone on this, I can feel it. The storytelling. Maybe the articulating of the human drama. Do you know how useful that is in leadership? People pay a lot of money for people who can get up in front of an audience and inspire, tell a story, maybe use mine because I have a dance background. So I often use my body because it saves a bunch of words, right? This theatrical ability can be used in a way that's satisfying, but we don't have to move to Hollywood. And then if you want to, because it, it, God gave you this gift for a reason. So if yeah. you, yeah. So I'll just shut up now. I hope no, that- No, don't, 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 don't shut up. I'm not asking you to shut up. I'm, 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 I'm creating the space now for everyone to join us Absolutely. in the conversation. We've got about six minutes. And, and uh, so what's opening up for me and what I think uh, the, like the message, like the message is that, how am I supposed to know what I'm supposed to be doing? It's not a question that you can't answer. It's actually a question that your own humanity gives you the gift of always knowing the answer. Yeah. Because you do feel in your body. So you know what you like, you know what you want. And at the risk of concluding wrongly, what you're supposed to be doing is what you feel you want. You can, you're, you're absolutely right. Soro, everybody, 
you can feel it. And it doesn't all download at once. Like, oh, I've got a map for my entire beingness. It might be just this little nugget. Just today, I feel yeah. like calling this person for some reason. You know, that's the way life is. Humans have an expectation of the download. But what if every day, every moment you're being guided, people listening to this, this might be on the path for them. Perfect timing. Time is now. Time is and now. we're right here. Ronald, what's yes. percolating over there, brother? Beautiful conversation, beautiful. I miss, I miss the daily huddle environment for, for this week. So I say I have to get in. This is a great conversation. Uh, the question I had is, what is the physical sensation that you feel when you're doing the thing that you're supposed to do? Is there a physical manifestation of that? Is there, there a physical manifestation of that? And, yeah. and one thing I actually, you know, the last part of the conversation really makes sense to me a few minutes ago before I, uh, I was driving to work and I thought about um, my voice, okay? I've had so many people say, Ronald, you got a voice. You got to do something with this voice. And then I say, okay, I'm calling Bryce Harden. Some of you may know Bryce. And I say, man, I got to call Bryce to see what to do with this voice. So this is so apropos for me. So let me just hear that physical sensation you got. You're already showing it. You're smiling. Just the thought of this. I mean, we don't have to like think too hard. Like it's, it's a, and when you're, it's sometimes it's a flow. Sometimes it's a, in the lower belly, there's a spark of excitement. It's not always going to be like, you know, swinging from the raft top, rafters, but it's going to be like, and sometimes there's an edginess of, well, I don't know, because everything lies on the other side of risk, right? With these inquiries. It's not, if, if comfort is not your friend, everybody, comfort is not your friend. The growth and juice is always with the, well, I don't know, I, I could get the door slammed in my face, but I've got to do it anyway. And you can feel that bubbles and it, it won't leave you alone. And Ronald, you were smiling. That's a good sign. Like nobody made the muscles in your face move. Your body went, ah! and like, ah! and everyone on this Zoom call could feel it. Here's that the is. thing. When you, when you are following the spark, everyone in the room can sort of feel it. It, it feels like, oh yeah, go do that. You know, it's contagious. Yeah, yeah. Love yeah. it, love it. Great answer. Thank you. You're the so smile welcome. is it. Physical, <laughs> the physical feeling is the smile. And look at everybody else is smiling because everyone can relate to this. Yes. That's how we know it's true, right? Because when one person follows it, it makes everyone else go, well, well yeah, yeah. It's, it's very inspiring. And so yeah. inspiration doesn't have to come through a big, I climb Mount Everest. It can be, you know, I'm going to pick up the phone and I, I have this voice. And people are going, do it, right? Because that's the natural impulse of something positive that's moving. Arnold, thank you for the question. And, you, you, you know, you're opening up this. It's like, how do I know? I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. What's right on the other side of that question for me is, well, darn it, give yourself the permission to do what you feel and want to do. Go for it. And what I love about what Ronald had the guts to do is he said it. Because yeah. now you've got this cheerleading squad, right? And once the word is out, there's a, there's a deeper commitment. That's why you can't do this kind of by yourself. Like, Daring to tell whether it's an accountability partner in business or something that you know, then someone's going to follow up and say, how did it go? And even if it didn't work out, there's a sense of accomplishment. I did that. And that makes your muscle for moving to the next step just that much stronger. People who don't take risks, it, it sort of atrophies after a while. And then that's the bitterness that we talked about earlier. Yeah, one more. And that'll be the last one before your final comment, Adele. Peter, go ahead, brother. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Adele, that was awesome. I am a little bit biased, though, and forgive me. I'm going to come at you frontal. Okay. I, I went to LinkedIn to see your profile, and it says something about women. Mm -hmm. What you just shared, I mean, 
it, it's across the border. I mean, it, believe me. It, it, it really is. Yeah. And, um, I'm, I'm so appreciative that I came on at the time I did to capture some of what you said, because it's really soul stirring and revelator in terms of bringing out some things. And the, 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 the concepts that you shared are so powerful. Um, I don't know if you're going to be on for the rest of the week. I'm joking. But um, I, I did send you a request, a little okay. tepid, because what? it said woman, but that, that's okay. But I, I appreciate no, no, no. It, it. You know, once upon a time, um, it's, it's changing now. My impression was that women were a little bit more open to these ideas. But I learned within the last five years, it was before the pandemic, there was a big shift. I mean, something is going on. Like people are like waking up, like they're tired of the grind. And a lot of guys, because they, this, it's this cultural expectation. They're like, you know, I, I'm, so I started getting a lot of senior level execs. I need to update this, the LinkedIn profile. I just need to do that. But I'm just loving your backdrop. You know, I, I'm just thinking, wow, there's a calling there. That's beautiful. Indeed, yeah. indeed. Yeah. Yeah. And Thank you, smile. Peter. Sure. Thank you. And uh, Adele, my God, we could be with you for the rest of eternity. This is awesome. The show you know? is changing lives. You, you guys are doing amazing stuff to spread things that people are craving. They, they just need some guidance, you know? Yeah. And uh, well, what you just said, all of that credit goes to the co-hosts of the show. One of them is right here with us. Acknowledge Tara Heaton and Bernie Gonzalez. You know, we're all we're all accomplices in creating that, and we're so delighted that uh, you you come and partner with us to do just that. Well, thank you so, for having uh, me. Had a blast. You know, time flies. It does. So, Adele, what is your last comment for us? Keep going. Don't give up. It's worth it. It is worth it, indeed. <laughs> Thank you, Adele. Thank you for being here. We're going to close the show the way we usually do, but in the context of how do you know that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing? Well, when it comes to loving, how do you know you're loving the one you, you're supposed to love? How do you know you're eating what you're supposed to eat? Well, we say love always, love everyone in your life. More importantly, love yourself. Give yourself the permission to love yourself and love the people you hate. Uh, stress less, gosh, you know, life is not that significant. You woke up and you know what? One day you may not, stress less, enjoy today. Laugh out loud, you know, like let it come straight from your belly and let it bust out. Eat mostly plant-based. And you know what? If for some reason you don't feel like it, do like we do. Mostly plant-based. Eat a burger. Come on, go for it. Give. Give everything you've got. Don't keep it all to yourself. Sleep. It will do your body good. And last but not least, move and shake what your mama gave you. This is our show for today. My name is Sorel Kitan. My co-host is Giovanni Gonzalez. We are the co-founders of The Daily Huddle, and we're lucky to have every day a host who brings us from 9 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. The Daily Huddle every weekday. So join us on Monday. Enjoy your weekend. Have a fantastic life. Blessings, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Awesome sauce. Good to see you, Peter. All right. Thank you.